Hey folks, Jeff Salzman here and welcome to The Daily Evolver. Today, I'm joined by Kim Barta, and you may recognize that name. Kim has been working with his sister, Terry O'Fallon, bringing forth their stages, S-T-A-G-E-S, stages model of human development that has gotten a good bit of traction in the integral evolutionary community of late. And so I'm happy to have him with us. Hey, Kim. Hi, Jeff. Nice to be here. It's so great. I really appreciate that you invited us, invited me here to talk, and I'm really excited to be on your program. So, Kim, you and I, we've spent exactly one weekend together. That's right. Several years ago, Mm -hmm. when you and Terry came to the Boulder Integral Center that I was Mm -hmm. running and uh, presented a, I think, three-day workshop on the stages model, and I joined you. And Mm -hmm. uh, I really thought it was terrific. And I have been happy to see the success that you've been having with it since. You know, what I love about it is kind of what I love about all of these developmental models. I'm not a scholar of them. I don't get necessarily all the fine points, but I get more space in my (laughs) consciousness. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I, I grow, I, 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 you know, I get a deeper realization of this whole evolutionary procreate urge that I'm a product of. So I appreciate that. So, yeah. So you're also a psychotherapist. And why don't you just give folks a little bit of your background so we know who we're talking to? Well, I've been working in the psychotherapy field for almost three decades now, almost 30 years. Uh, um, I did my undergraduate uh, in a really interesting multidisciplinary program where we combined uh, sociology, psychology, social work, and uh, education, all into one psychotherapeutic modality. So it was very broad-based. You, you took a look at culture, all the way from culture to the neurobiology of the mind. And yeah. it, was a, it doesn't even exist anymore, but I wish it did, because it was such a beautiful, broad understanding. And I think it gives a lot for when you're working with people to be able to have the, the micro and the macro all in your toolbox. At the same yeah, well, it time. sounds integral in the sense that you're drawing it from, you know, several quadrants, at least, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's a good beginning to an integral sensibility. <laughs> yeah. So I ask you what you might want to talk about today. And I loved your answer. Mm-hmm. And you said, let's talk about the light and shadow aspects of the higher stages of development. Right. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and, you know, that's really intriguing to me because, you know, I'm all about looking at the light and shadow of these various stages. And, you know, in the Daily Evolver, we talk a lot about the, you know, the downside of red and the aggression and the selfishness and all of that and, it, 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 and traditionalism and, and the soullessness of modernity and the, how green post-modernity flattens everything out and has trouble with truth claims and hierarchy and all of that stuff. But I still have this basic sort of naive belief that once we get into the integral stages, that it's just going to be nice. (laughs) It's just going to be sweetness and light. And I actually know that's not true, but I I haven't really thought a lot about, you know, the the shadow side of, of integral. So, and, and on up. So let, I guess let's just start with, what do you mean by shadow and light? I, th- I think we all have an idea, but let's just get your definition. So when we talk about the light, when I talk about the light, I'm talking about the shape of consciousness, whether it be shadow or light. It's one consciousness, and the shape of consciousness in the light is where everything's open and resonating. And so you're being able to receive accurately and clearly and openly. You're being able to take action, agency with it. You're able to interact uh, with others in the universe in a very open manner. Uh, You're able to see that you are and it is you. And shadow, of course, is any constriction upon that that keeps us from our fullest potential, uh, the fullest being that we can be and are as humans and as consciousness. And so shadow is a constriction in the shape of Uh, the holistic consciousness that we have. All right. So as we uh, move into these higher stages, and actually, why don't we just take a look at your basic map 
of the higher stages because okay. everybody slices and dices it a little differently, and so do you guys. Right. Okay, we're going to show a chart here that compares the stages model with integral theory. And I am cognizant that many of you are listening to this in a podcast, so we'll make it as clear as possible. If you do want to look at the chart, you can find it at dailyevolver.com, which is where all of my stuff is, including this episode, which is called Light and Shadow at the Higher Stages. All right. Okay, so here we have... Uh, a correlation between your stages model and aqua model, which is yes. what we use here at the Daily Evolver. Mm -hmm. And you have divided the d development up into, I think we'll probably end up talking about three big tiers today. Yes. One is the concrete. Yeah. That's where we're actually dealing with objects and trees and houses mm -hmm. and things, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. then there's the subtle tier or the mind emotion tier of right. development mm -hmm. and then there's what you call the met aware mm -hmm. and that's moving up into becoming aware of awareness that's right, right. okay all right mm -hmm. so those are the three tiers mm -hmm. and for those of you who are listening and not watching this uh, what uh, the stages model says is that the four, first four stages of development in the aqua model that is the archaic the magic, the red magic mythic, and then the amber mythic or traditionalism. All of those, those first four big stages in the aqua model are all in the concrete tier. Right, Kim? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Okay. So then amber actually spills over, or the, mm -hmm. the, the, the traditional spills over into the subtle tier. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and then, so we have... The, the the rest of traditionalism is up there and that's where it's the the world of the mind and emotions mm -hmm. and then we have orange rational or modernity mm -hmm. green pluralism and teal holistic and mm -hmm. all four of those are in what you call the subtle tier that's right okay and so where we are, <laughs> those of us who are listening and watching and creating the Daily Evolver, is we're somewhere, you know, we, we, we're knee-deep in orange rational modernity. We're waist-deep in pluralistic mm -hmm. and green. And mm -hmm. then we're moving into that teal holistic mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and then the turquoise, what you call full-on integral, which is then the beginning mm -hmm. of the metaware or the mm -hmm. aware of awareness uh, mm -hmm. tier. Yeah. Uh, and so this is the territory that I want to look at today. All right. Because this is where most of us are. Mm -hmm. All right. So Perfect. I think you could unshare that and tell us about it. All right. So when we move into uh, third-person perspective, we're actually entering a new type of world, uh, third person. And see, so that's what uh, our now, numbers... When you, when you actually, say third person perspective, wh which of these tiers are we talking about? Yeah. So, uh, so first person perspective are the first two steps in uh, integral theory, the archaic and the magic. First person perspective is we can only see the world through our own eyes. That's a whole way of looking at the world. We don't see what other people are seeing. We only see what we're seeing. Right. We only want what we want. Right. Second person perspective, we see what we can see, and we also can see what the other person can see. In a sense, we can right. imagine that they're looking back at us, seeing our face. At first person perspective, we don't get that. Right. Second and, person and, perspective. And that, and that's a classic move of development in childhood. Absolutely. And, and, yes. and we call it the move between egocentric and ethnocentric, where, you know, yeah. we, we could take the perspective of the other. And this right. gets us up into what? The tra traditionalism, amber? Mm -hmm. Yeah, gets us up into amber. Yep. Okay. Up through amber. Okay. Right. And then we get third person. That's and right. And that's the beginning of modernity or the mm -hmm. orange rational system. Right. right. And describe that then. So third person perspective is like, now I can look at Jeff who's looking at me and now, but I can also imagine somebody objectively looking at both of us and I can go, now, how would an objective third person view the way that Jeff and I are talking right now? Okay. Isn't that something? I mean, isn't, isn't that amazing what the mind can do? Yeah. And, and what, how development comes online. 
but yeah. the ability to see your own perspective, another perspective, and then the perspective of somebody looking at you dealing with another person. I know. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So you can see how consciousness is expanding each step. Each time yeah. we take a new perspective, it's expanding. Yeah. And it, it, we enter a whole new world space. In, in That's right. Those. Yeah. Well, a whole That's new right. ball game. Yeah. A whole new way of looking at the world every time we change a perspective. Right. All right. So third person gets us through to, so but modernity, rational, postmodern, yeah. pluralistic, and the beginnings of integral. No. No. Fourth person okay. perspective starts I'm in sorry. green. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. The, 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 the third person perspective gets us through modernity. Yes. Okay. And then that's the one where that somebody can look at us. All right. So then the yeah. fourth person perspective begins at green or right. postmodern. And right. so what's that look like? So fourth person perspective is now <clears throat> I can see what I see. I can see what Jeff's seeing. Another person is seeing at me. I can imagine, I can expand my consciousness to observe and be the observer rationally, objectively looking at Jeff and I. But now what I do is that moves out to a global level. I get another perspective that moves out to a global level and says, well, wait a minute. Jeff might be raised in a different family than Kim. He might be looking at similar things, but seeing them in a different way because of the context he was raised in, by the context that Kim was raised in, by the context that a Chinese person who is sitting here objectively observing Jeff and Kim is going to objectively, quote unquote, observe it differently than somebody from India, from Russia. And so all of a sudden you're taking a global view of, it's a perspective of a global view that includes culture and context and how much more sophisticated that is Yep. is viewing the world that this imaginary objective observer. Yeah. Well, and we can see that as we move into, yeah. you know, green post-modernity, uh, where That's we right. become world-centric. You know, mm -hmm. we get interested mm -hmm. in people who are different than That's us. Right. Uh, right. We, we begin to see the global uh, systems of climate. That's you know, right. you exactly. talk climate change to somebody who's not world-centric, and they think that you're screwing with them. That's right. Yeah. It makes you know? no sense. Yeah. All right. So, so here we are then. So that's fourth person, this bigger context. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. gets us, it starts at green and moves us into the beginnings of integral. Yes. Right. And right. so, uh, so maybe this is where we shift into seeing some of the shadow side of things. And, that's right. you know, uh, so we can become more conscious of that. Mm -hmm. Very good. So to understand shadow at later developmental levels, it really helps to understand how shadow forms at the earliest developmental levels, because that's where it comes from a lot. And so there's a couple of ways that we can get shadow to occur at later developmental levels. And one of them is the way that shadow forms early on. Let's say that we are traumatized early on as a child to some degree, and almost all of us are a little bit because... The only thing that it takes to cause trauma is an incident that is stronger or larger than the coping skills that we have at that time. I was going to say. You can imagine as an infant. It's traumatic being a human being. <laughs> it's traumatic being a human being. As an infant, is. we don't have any coping skills, so it doesn't take much. Right. You can imagine as an infant, for example, we don't, we don't even have memory yet. So if we're left alone in a crib to cry, we are in the eternity of crying. There's no memory of being held or loved. That's why people advocate a lot of closeness. And the research actually shows that if you carry your baby, sleep with your baby, have them with you all along while they're very small, that they become more caring, more loving, less violent people as adults. Just the fact that you are with them. Because what happens at this stage is you are creating the seed information of understanding of this new world that you just got born into. And what is that? Is it that nobody's around and nobody cares? Or that people are present and loving and available? Is it that people are hostile? Right? So, so if we come with hostility, it's not our linguistic brain hasn't formed yet. So we're not going to have a linguistic memory. And our picture memory isn't even formed yet, but our kinesthetic memory is formed. So we're going to have a kinesthetic memory without visual, without auditory, without any what we would call conscious memory, but our body remembers. 
And our body's going to remember hostile environment or absentee environment or connected environment. And this is what you would call the shadow or the beginnings of the shadow? This is the beginning of shadow right there. Right. Okay. So that's the beginning of shadow for that little child. For the infant inside all yeah, of us. I'm that's right. That little child. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right. So now, then so then lead us through how that continues to form okay. and, and at the higher stages. Right. So there's two real key. Well, there's there's three ways you can get shadow at higher stages. And I'm gonna go through two of them right now. We can go through the third one later. The first one is, let's say we have hostility as an infant or a toddler, and it's beyond our coping skills. So what we do is it's so intense that we just block it out of our memory. That's walling off shadow. That's, if you think about our bodies, Jeff, that uh, if you get an infection in your thumb, that it walls it off. Otherwise, you get gangrene all the way in your system and your body dies. You're dead. So walling off is a crucially important and valuable thing that your body does so that you survive injuries. But what happens is it doesn't just, just leave it walled off. What it does is it rallies the immune system and then it comes back in and it heals the infection. So it walls off, rallies the immune system, comes back in and heals. And this is the same thing that's happening in our psychology is we have a trauma that's too big for us to cope with. We wall it off. And then we go through our life and hopefully get healthy and strong enough that we are at some point ready to come back and heal it. And often that doesn't occur until we're at fourth person perspective, 20, right. 30 years later. Right. Yeah. And, and that is, if you look evolutionarily, that move into green, postmodern, pluralistic, that's also the world of we get really fascinated with our interiors. And that's, that's right. the beginning of psychotherapy and exactly. that whole exploration. That that's has right. been so fruitful for so many of us. So beautiful and so wonderful. And that's the beauty and gift that we have at 4.0 is to be able to really look at those interiors and go rescue the pieces that have been walled off, the children that have been walled off in the dungeon, the, the walled off sections of ourselves. But what happens in the meantime is this walled off section just isn't benignly there walled off because what it is in psychology is an ego state. An ego state is a sub-state of the personality. It's got thought, it's got emotion, it's got impulse, and it's got all these thoughts, emotions, and impulse, the a mini persona inside our own persona. And you can kind of imagine that we've walled it off in some kind of a dungeon or something, or we've put it in its bedroom where we don't have to look at it because we don't want to deal with it. <laughs> and then we run along and create all these wonderful plans in our life. You know, we go on a diet or we create a business plan. And then at some point, Every ego state has circadian rhythms. We go to sleep. And when we go to sleep, guess who comes out to play? This other ego state. So you might notice in your life, Jeff, or anybody listening, it certainly has happened to me, that you make all the greatest plans in the world, you know, go on a diet, and then all of a sudden you're eating a plate of brownies. You have a great business plan, and all of a sudden you find yourself binge-watching Netflix because you really don't want to work on it anymore. You have these... Um, self-sabotaging experiences. And so we wonder, why are we self-sabotaging ourselves? Well, it's not the dominant ego state. You can't find the answer in the dominant ego state. The answer for self-sabotage is in the shadow. It's in the walled-off ego states that as soon as you go to sleep, they sneak out of the bedroom and start running the show. And then we get horrified by it, and we try to shove it back in the bedroom so that it can't be seen. And then we run the show and try to make it all okay again. And then we go to sleep, but sure enough, it comes out again. Mm -hmm. So what do we do with it? How, how do we work with this? <laughs> okay, so one of the beautiful things about fourth person perspective is we stop trying to suppress it and we start trying to get to know it. Remember the, the good old 4.0, every, every truth is relative. We, everybody gets to show, it's like the round table, the knights at the round table. Everybody gets to sit down at the round table, put down their swords, and we're going to talk. And that's the beautiful aspect of 4.0 is we start saying, hey, every ego state has a right to its own voice, its own experience. And what we're really looking at is deep intimacy. We want intimacy with others between you and me, and that's what's beautiful, but we also want interior intimacy. So that's where we start bringing out the ego states that have been blocked away, walled off, hidden away. And we start saying, hey, I want to get to know you. 
Mm-hmm. And we get to know each one in a non-judgmental, unconditionally accepting environment. We get to know each one. Even the sniveling little fear freak? Even the sniveling little fear freak, <laughs> even the controlling <laughs> dominant bully, all of the different ones that have been shoved off into the... Yeah. The one with the bottomless pit that can never be filled? That can never be filled. That's right. And the reason it has a bottomless pit is it's walled off. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, once you don't wall it off anymore, the bottomless pit, pit disappears because yeah. it's a child that's being carried with you every moment. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And, it's, and so, it's really one of the things that is, I think, so... Uh, such a marker of integral consciousness is mm-hmm. that we begin to want to turn towards our pain yeah, yeah. instead of away from it. So we don't want to drink yeah. it away. We don't want to take a pill. We don't want to pray it away. We, what, we, we want to actually encounter it. Mm-hmm. And it turns yeah. out that that's our entree into that's right. the next thing. You that's know. right. Yeah. That's the beautiful move into 4.0 as we start turning towards, we want to heal. And so now, if you take a look at meditation, for example, uh, a classic meditation is I have a thought and let it go, have a thought and let it go, have a thought and let it go, and I eventually get to a quiet mind. But it's a meditative quiet mind, and it's usually not very stable. Why? Because that's actually a style of suppression. Now, I'm going to get in trouble with that, right? There's going to be a lot of people upset with I get me it, for though. saying that. But that's what happens because at 4.0, we turn that meditation around. We go, there's a thought. Let me get to know it. There's a feeling. Let me get to know it. And then when I get to know it, then what happens is I have this intimate connection. And and now that I can get to know it, instead of it being walled off and pushed away, it's, it's, I can create a community that works cooperatively together in a beautiful way. So what happens is the self-sabotaging starts going away because everybody's now working together on the same team. Yeah. And you could do that psychotherapeutically uh, by literally bringing these voices to the table and saying, welcome. And that's right. Letting them speak through your own mouth and, you know, all of that good stuff. That's That's right. It's so powerful for me. Uh, Is there anything else you would, you know, I, I mean, I could, I can also, Think of how we can work with those things meditatively in the sense that we can yes. just meditatively become ever more aware of that emotion and feel and that's where what it I is in our body. Yeah. 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 That's what I encourage my people to do is now, now when I say have a thought and let it go, I'm not saying that's a bad meditation. That's a great meditation because at third person perspective, you need to have that control of mind. Yes. So I'm not saying that's bad. That's a very important step. But it's one step. It's not the end step. Yeah. So we need to be able to have a thought and let it go, have a thought and let it go, have an emotion, let it go, have an impulse and let it go. We need to do it the whole way through, not just a thought. And then, but what then would we do at fourth person perspective, we would turn it around and go, I have a thought. Let me get to know it. I have an emotion. Let me get to know it. I have an impulse. Let me get to know it. Yeah. And then as we get to know it, we can work cooperatively. And at 4.5, what happens is, is we have a couple different things going on. One was we divide, design these beautiful systems of how everything works together. And the other thing is we do is we start integrating them, not just cooperatively working together, but actually integrating them into one consciousness. It's a whole nother step in the evolution of shadow resolution. And this is what you would refer to as turquoise. This is Turquoise. what I would refer to as late teal. Early okay. turquoise. Okay, so this right. is solidly integral. This is where a lot of our people are trying to work. That's and right. so say that again. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let me get that 4.5 thing again. Okay. At 4.5, we are designing the systems that work the best, that make all the ego states work together. And keep in mind, we don't just have one walled off ego state, right? First of all, we have a first person perspective, second person perspective, third person perspective, fourth person perspective, but we're not necessarily aware. shadow. So we're, we're aware of all of those. At we're aware of those. Age. So but we now we've got that. at least four voices in our head, right? Right. Okay. And, yep. and then we have any traumatized ones that are walled off. So right. by the time we get a fourth person perspective, we might have eight, 10, 12, 14 voices running around in our head. Right. We People do. Often I mean, I do. This is the committee. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. The committee in the head. Yeah. So what we do is we start getting to know, we have them at the round table 4.0. And then we start having everybody have a place at the table to talk to, you know, and, and, 
And then we start designing interactive systems. And this comes on at late 4.0 and moving into 4.5, where we start designing the systems. How are these ego states going to work together in the best way? And so we're allowing each their voice, but now it's not just that we're holding them and loving them. We're actually designing systems. So we see the value in each one. Oh, that one that was sniveling, it's the one that really is intuitive about other people's sadness. We need to have that, right? The one that was a bully, it's the one that's trying to control everything. So it's manageable. We need to do that too, but not in a way that suppresses the others, but in a way that works with the others. So they all get new roles. They all get new tasks that are upgraded. And that's the beauty of 4.5 Teal is being able to understand how to tweak the elements in a system so that the system works better and then design the overall system so that it works together better. And wouldn't you say that, that the feeling of that is just being bigger? Being better again. Yes, being bigger again. Yeah, so that you could, all of the stuff is included and mm-hmm. I'm friendly with all of it now. I, right. I don't want any of it to go away. Right. I see that every piece of it is precious. Yeah. So what's the shadow? That sounds like a place where I could hang out for the rest of my life. That's right. Well, that's the light side. That's the light <laughs> side of 4.0 and 4.5. Okay. okay. Cool. That's the light side of green and teal. The shadow side is that we sometimes don't recover certain shadow elements. Sometimes we don't recover a walled off ego state because it's got so much horror in it that we're not... We, we, we don't want to open that Pandora's box, right? Because okay. it's going to shape the way that I view about myself. I might have gone through my whole life thinking that everybody liked me. And actually, there were signals all along where I was kind of being an arrogant jerk. And all of a sudden, I have to open that box? I don't know. Maybe it's kind of nice to live in the delusion that everybody likes me when, when I'm not necessarily attending to their needs, right? Yeah. Or maybe I was raped as an infant. Or as a child, and do I want to open that box? You know, there's part of me that's guarding that box. It's like this mediator between my conscious mind and the walled off ego state. There's often this other part that's saying, "You don't want to go there." I know what's in there, and I know what you got, and you don't want to go there, right? Right. So, so hang on. Let me look at this um, thing here. Uh, hang on. All right. So as we move up 3.5, you know, rational modern, 4.0, green pluralistic, mm-hmm. that is, we're doing this work of looking at our shadow and finding these disowned right. sub-personalities and so forth. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. not just a matter of degree that we just keep doing it, is it? Uh, I, I get that you're, you're never, or I don't know, maybe not for a long time, are you going to fully uh, inhabit your karma, if you will? Mm-hmm. But uh, isn't it, it more than just a matter of degree, I guess. Isn't there a qualitative difference that, that would make it the, the difference between a, like a 4.0 and a 4.5? Yes, there's a qualitative difference. Uh, imagine the difference between coming into a home and saying, you're all welcome. We love you. That's beautiful. Okay. And that's, that's the beautiful gift of 4.0 is unconditional love, right? And we don't want to lose that. But 4.5 adds an element to it, and it's a qualitative element. It says, yes, I unconditionally love everybody, and now we're all going to unconditionally love each other, and now we're going to see what are the valuable traits of each other and how are they going to interact in a way that that raises all of us to an even greater place, kind of like how a rising tide lifts all boats. Right. So it's a, it's a larger space. It's a more complex dynamic space. It's still filled with unconditional love, but it's also got a strategic, hence we often call it strategist, a strategic aspect to it that says, and now how can we work together to make this all rise in consciousness even more? Yeah. So it begins to bring value judgments online. I'm yeah, just, value judgments based upon hierarchy, natural hierarchy of of what's higher and lower. 
so to speak? Yeah, yeah. So actually, you see development much better at 4.5 than you do at 4.0 at teal than you do at green. Because green tends to not want to see the hierarchy. It just wants to wrap everything up in unconditional love. What a beautiful right. thing. How can right. you ask for anything right. more than that? Right. There's right. no reason to go beyond that if you don't want to. I mean, that's beautiful. You have the light at 4.0. That's wonderful. Well, let's and, keep walking up this ladder then to... Well, all right. So I'm sorry. Keep going. Yeah. So then at Teal, though, we just take that and move it to the next level. And and so where are the value judgments coming from? The value judgments are coming from all of the ego states. Hmm. It's not coming from the dominant ego state. We've already sat at the round table at 4.0 and heard everybody's values, everybody's positive intent. That's a really important thing to get to if you're going to resolve shadow. At 4.0, we get to the positive intent of every ego state, every voice. But now that we have the positive intents and, and they're all kind of adjusting to each other and getting on this universal um, agreement of what is the positive intents and how are the many positive intents fitting in the big positive intent, now all of a sudden they can work together uh, and they all have this place to work together. And as they work together and work together, it raises consciousness to another level and another level. And the second very important thing that happens is as the positive intents come together and we start working as a single system, the consciousness becomes one consciousness instead of lots of voices. All of a sudden, what happens when you do this, when you do the integrative work, the the voices start going away. It's one integrated system. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's got a level of peace, a level of quiet mind that is unbelievable. And it's sustainable. It's much more sustainable, you know? So at at 3.5, we did the have a thought, let it go, have a thought, let it go. And you get to quiet mind, but then you get off the pillow and you got thoughts and all these things that interrupt you. When you do this work correctly, what happens at late 4.5 or early 5.0, early turquoise, late 4.5, is is the voices start going away because they're so intimately integrated that they don't have to be talking anymore. And so all of a sudden what happens is the mind goes quiet and you just walk around in quiet mind everywhere you go. Now, I'm not saying that I've done this perfectly because every once in a while you have one. But in your general way of walking through life, if you do this work, is you just walk around in quiet mind. And yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I sort of think about this and, uh, and evaluate myself and my own sort of place in this, I know what you're talking about for sure. Mm-hmm. I, 80% of the time, have the ability when I remember to do that. Yeah. And there's about 20% of the time where I don't care if I remember or not. I can't do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So that's very advanced and you're moving right up in there. And so this is yeah, beautiful. And but that it just is, continues. Yeah, right. All right. So then here we are. Let, let's say we're at 5.0, which is okay. you're, you know, we're solidly in, turquoise. We're yep. in, all right. We're in the tur- turquoise now. Mm-hmm. And um, so, so that with that quiet mind is available to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all of the, the voices are integrated. They're all, mm-hmm. you know, adequately or fully heard so that right. we don't have to, they don't have to keep chattering. Right. They all yeah. feel like they belong. They're all in the, in, in the game. Right. right. Um, what's the shadow here? What's, what's, what could what's possibly the be at, the problem? The shadow of turquoise, the shadow of teal, you mean, as, as that's going in? Yeah. What happens is. And also at certain- 5.0. And then at 5.0, so we'll go at teal because we haven't covered the shadow there. The okay. shadow of teal is some ego states start thinking that they're better than others and that they should be the one to make the determination, okay? Now, some ego states are at a higher developmental level and they can see the broader picture, but that doesn't mean that they get to play dictator. Okay, okay. all right. Because if they do, then we go right back to the whole suppression issue, right? Okay, and this is the 4.5. This is moving this is 4. into- 4.5. It's right, moving, moving into yeah. teal from green. Okay, right. yeah. All right, so we're we're privileging certain ego states. Like, give me That's an example. Right. What what do you see in yourself and your clients? Yeah, yeah. So I work with clients and myself even. And and at this point, you might say, okay, I've got this dominant ego state. Now I'm working with all these other ego states. And what I'm really trying to do is get them to agree with me, the concept of who I think I am. And as long as we take that tack, we are going to not make it through in the fully healthy way 
because we still have a dominant ego state that wants to control it. I think I'm doing that. That's what everybody does. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> okay. You're yeah. not alone in it, Jeff. That's common. Yeah. But look, that's good though i have a, a new insight into that it, it, there's still yeah. this idea of who, of who jeff is or ought to be that's right that that's i right. want everybody to line up around that's right that's what, what it is yeah and so we do what we do with that then is we take you know how we have the round table and we listen to every one of the ego states what we do is we do the same thing from each ego state now we have that other ego state that you don't call jeff but is one of the voices of jeff okay uh huh. The sniveling one that you identified. How does it relate to every one of the others as the dominant I? Very okay. good. Yes. And now, how does the other one and the other one and the other yes. one until we've yes. gone the whole way around the round table? Yeah. Everyone getting to be the dominant I, seeing every other ego state. Jesus. It sounds like voice dialogue on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or gestalt on steroids where you know yeah, every, every perspective and every subpersonality gets to have their view of every other one exactly wow that's what makes it truly integral otherwise wow. we're just playing at it you're right you're right that's good <laughs> that's good and 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 that that's a fertile field for me to plow because i haven't done that, that i ain't there yet yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know. I don't know anybody else who's doing it. I'm sure somebody else has thought of this, but this is the work that I really bring in is, is how do we do that? Because when we do it from that perspective, when we go into Teal, now we're seeing it from all perspectives simultaneously. Right. And now you've got that truly self-adaptive system. Yeah. That's what, that's what Teal is, self-adaptive systems, right? If you can't feel it from every ego state, the whole system from every ego state, then you can't have a truly complex adaptive system operating, right? If right. you don't have all the information. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's just a matter of de this development thing. It's so beautiful. Right. It's just, just more, more. I want to see more. That's I want right. to see more. I want more to be online. I want to be aware of more. I want to hold more. I want to be bigger. That's right. It's just yeah. astonishing. It's seeing more and in. seeing more from more angles. Yes. It's both. Seeing more yes. and seeing more from more different angles. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So that I, I get that that is a, a, a shadow of, of teal, you know, where I, mm -hmm. you know, I want to impose my I, idea of what right. Jeff is still. I'm still right. clinging to Jeff. To, yes. I'm still, still clinging to Jim. I'm Jeff. still. <laughs> yeah. Got it. All right. So <laughs> then, so, so then we're, you know, sort of frothing our way up now to 5.0, which right. is the full on, or at least entry level turquoise. Yeah. And uh, so tell me more about that. Okay, so 5.0 is construct aware. Um, and both in, in stages and in uh, Suzanne Kugreuter's construct aware, and it's a, it's a new tier, it's the meta aware tier, and it's a crucially different way of thinking because at this point, we're getting bigger, we're getting bigger, we're more complex, we're seeing things from multiple different angles. It's coming together into one huge system. And at Construct Aware, what we do is we start deconstructing the way the mind thinks about things itself. Before we could deconstruct a thought or we could deconstruct a feeling maybe, but we're deconstructing the way the mind thinks itself. and and that is a completely different experience. Wow. So it's what Suzanne often says, or what we say, uh, it's simplicity on the other side of complexity. Because you can get all this complexity, but then all of a sudden, it all, it all uh, is deconstructed in fifth person perspective. Into, and, but you have to get there. You have to get to that whole wholeness operating system, so to speak, before you can, in a healthy way, deconstruct it all. Because otherwise, you're running around deconstructing all these different ego states, and but then you're not deconstructing the way that they interact with it. It, it's, it's, it becomes a mess. And what I really encourage people to do is do the work of 4.0 and 4.5 before you try reaching for something later. Because the people that go through it that haven't resolved their shadow, 5.0, this crossover into 5.0 is a mess for them. They lose their jobs. They lose their spouse. They move. It's a, it's a, it's a complete chaotic upheaval. And, and, and two, three years down the road, they're really struggling because, of, uh, because maybe they left their job. They left their spouse and they moved. You know? 
Uh, and Terry has research on that, that people, a high percentage of people, they're deconstructing, because you're deconstructing your life in a sense. Yeah. Well, I get it. I, I, I fantasize about walking out the front gate and keeping going. That's right. Right. But I've got yeah. the greatest life, you know, I could imagine. I know, right? And so what happens is you're deconstructing the way the mind is looking at the world. And so you start deconstructing your relationships, you deconstruct your uh, job, you deconstruct where you live. And, and all of a sudden, you're realizing that you've got nothing holding you here, which is okay in a way. But mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we need to feed ourselves. So. Right. Well, but there is, a, it feels like there is a contact with something bigger and better. In, in there the, is. That's the light side of 5.0 because when you deconstruct yeah, let's, let's everything that you've created in your mind, right? When you've deconstructed that, you have just pure consciousness. You have vibrant freedom. A lot of people say vibrant freedom or just vibrant aliveness. And that's, that's the new consciousness that you are. That's who you are. You're not Jeff. You're not Kim. You're not whoever you thought you were, you are vibrant freedom, vibrant consciousness itself. And that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful experience. It's yeah. a wonderful who I am. Wow. Yeah. No. And, and, and clearly that is the light side. And I could feel the thrill of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you're right. It is. A, it's a simplicity beyond complexity because yeah. you know, all, we're all played with all our systems of systems. And, we're right, right, right. and, and, the, the, and then all of a sudden it, relaxes and That's we right. find ourselves floating on a new in a new space and and, and this is literally a new space you're calling it a, the a, a, the next tier the, the tier the above tier. The, the right. tier above subtle subtle is the mind and emotional tiers which gets right. us previously up to 4.5 yep. and now we're in the metaware That's right call, which is the where awareness itself is That's sort right. of the game That's right it's just pure awareness and yep. now we're just observing awareness of what is the world like it's pure awareness. It's not filled with persona, personality, thoughts, uh, attachments, all of these things. What is that experience like? And that's where it just becomes incredibly vast. So you're talking about consciousness expanding and expanding, but you can only expand with complexity so far because complexity itself, right? <laughs> yeah. It's too complex. It's too complex. <laughs> it yeah, bogs down. It gets gummy. That's right. That's exactly what happens. And that's exactly what happens at 2.5, the conformist level. And this is a beautiful thing about stages because the top of the concrete tier has similarities to top of the subtle tier. What happens at the top of the concrete tier? Bureaucracy. And bureaucracy gets, just gets muddled down. You get so much bureaucracy that it becomes dysfunctional. And that's what happens at 4.5 strategist. The shadow side of strategist is it gets so complex that you can't even comprehend it. It gets muddled down. It gets so complex. Systems are so complex that you don't even understand how they're impacting other systems. And, and it gets muddled down in a, in a, in a co cosmological, psychological bureaucracy. Yeah. Oh, and, and you use word like bureaucracy, and it, it, it actually helps us to see how this developmental move, these moves are happening in the collective. That's right. In the culture and in the right. society and politics uh -huh. and systems of government. That's right. That's right. Fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> indeed. All right. So the 5.0, we're up here at Construct Aware again, where it, 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 it turquoise. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it could just feel like the whole thing's disintegrated and we want right. to, you know, uh, uh, we want to we want, we want to get rid of all these encumbrances. That's right. We want to get rid of them. And yet that's a very scary thing. Yeah. Imagine letting go of all of that. Everything that you've thought about who you are, everything that you've made up your life about, you know, to realize that that's all part of the movie theater. I mean, really get it, not just go, okay, yeah, this is a movie theater, yeah. but to live in that space of seeing it as a movie theater right. and, and how, how disorienting that is to you as an individual, because you have nothing to pin who you are on anymore. Right. So yeah. the shadow side here is just sort of the naive acting out of this. One of the Something shadow like sides that. is the uh, absolute fear of going into it. Okay. So we pull ourselves out, right? Okay. I don't there trust it. <laughs> Another trust issue. Just like 1.0 is a new trust issue coming into this world. 5.0 is a new trust issue too, because now you're living in a truly a new world and you don't know, you don't have anything to hang on to. Okay. I mean, one point doesn't even know the contours of their body. Imagine that, you know, 
They discover yeah. things by putting them in their mouth and some of them they suck on and some of them they bite on and they bite on one of the things and it hurts. Yeah. It's their own toe and they don't even realize it, right? No, that's my toe. Oh, that's me. Ouch, that's that hurt. Who's biting my toe? <laughs> yeah, and that's something. <laughs> So, right. so we have that same sort of, we're just feeling into this. Yeah. We have fear of it. It hurts. Maybe it's a little bit like biting our toe in the sense that Sometimes. there's pain yeah. here and we want to withdraw from it. Uh, and then the other possibility is that we overreact to it in the sense of, uh, you know, changing our life too much or something. That's right. right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. And then a new thing comes online, another performative contradiction. There's performative contradictions all the way up and down the developmental scale. Okay. Performative contradiction that comes on here is, and, and I prefer not to even look at performative contradictions. I see them as defending your territory because that makes much more psychological sense. What is a performative contradiction? Just a perf- yeah, performative contradiction is the statement that you make denies itself. So, for example, me saying, hey, Jeff, did you know that I'm dead? <laughs> Okay, gotcha. To make the statement means that I'm, you're right. Yeah. So now some people say that 4.0 is a performative contradiction. It depends upon how you look at it. Uh, there's some philosophical theoreticians that say, ultimately, no matter what you do, if you break it all the way down, it leads to a performative contradiction. Um, but in, in the more human sense, it's just defending its territory. Yeah. All we're doing is we're saying we need an unconditionally loving space. So every truth is relative, and we're going to welcome every truth in. Okay. And here you're talking about pluralistic green uh, for right. Yes, yeah. exactly. And that's such a beautiful place. What more can yeah. you ask for? A right. place of unconditional love where you 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 respect everybody's truth. And but there's a problem with that because if you respect everybody's truth, and somebody comes in that says I don't respect truth, and everybody needs to be- believe what I believe, then that's going to destroy the environment. Yep. Right. Yep. So, so that doesn't necessarily mean that you say you can't be at the round table. It just means, hey, there's six knights at the round table. And if you try to be a dictator, there's six swords going to be in your body. OK, right. now you're welcome at the round table, but you don't get to play dictator. Yeah. <laughs> and in that yeah. case, it's not a performative contradiction. It's only a performative contradiction if you say you can't control the rest of us. Right. Right. And that's, the, again, this pluralistic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Thing. So the performative contradiction then up at 5.5, mm-hmm. at 5.0, 5.5 is what? Yeah, uh, that basically everything needs to be deconstructed. Right. But if you okay. do that, then you have to deconstruct the fact that you're deconstructing. I see. I see. Got it. Okay. And now you're constructing. But wait a minute. If I'm constructing, I'm back at 4.5. Right. Oh, wait a minute. So I need to deconstruct that. Oh, but then I need to deconstruct that. And so this is a shadow that comes up at 5.0 and people get tangled in this, tangled in this place because you're letting go and you're deconstructing everything. And then you get to the point, oh, I need to deconstruct even that thought of deconstruction. And as soon as you do that, oh my gosh, the whole mess comes back, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to navigate this in a really skillful way. So Otherwise, you just get how, tangled in the knot. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Got it. And, and, and I could actually feel it even. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so how do we move through that then? What's next? Okay. So the move through that is, yes, I'm deconstructing everything and everything is a construct, but I can now start utilizing constructs, seeing them as constructs, but utilizing and moving constructs around to create a different kind of experience for the people I'm around and for myself, for the shape of consciousness itself. And I can deconstruct them so that I'm in emptiness. I can let them arise, but I'm not attached to any form or shape of the construction. So and, you're not, makes, and you're not anti-construct anymore. No, you're not anti-construct anymore. Right. But, but your constructs have been liberated into uh, emptiness, if you will. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, so that they're, not means, so, they're not so contracting. They're not they're so, not, it, they're it, not, they're not defining. Right. Yes. Got it. Yeah. And so okay. now you can have that vibrant freedom and openness, but the, all the creativity too. Yeah. Oh, all the creativity with it. Yeah. Right on. And it's very beautiful. And this is where a lot of remarkable models get formed here at 5.5. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So again, trans. So five point five is is now we're solidly turquoise, right? Yes. We're, mm-hmm. we're, and um, and you you talk about I I think you you mentioned it in passing a fifth person perspective. Yes. 
And so, so we know with you know, first, second, third, the fourth person perspective is the pluralistic green, where we get the context, we get the world centric view. Mm-hmm. What's fifth person perspective? So fifth person perspective is that under, being able to see the constructs. Okay. So first person perspective, I can see me. Second person perspective, I can see you seeing me and I can see you what you're seeing. Third person perspective, the objective. Fourth person perspective, all three of those are in a constant text and that context shaped the way they think feel think feel and believe and and observe even objectively and now at fifth person perspective we bring on and all of this is a construct of the mind i can step into the construct of the mind but i can step out of it and view it from that perspective Uh, too yeah and 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 yeah. just the use some of the lingo I use, egocentric to ethnocentric to world centric. We're moving in now into a cosmocentric view. Yes, we're seeing uh, it can be the it can be. the and, uh, you know the way I would describe that is we are aware of the animating energetics of the cosmos, and mm-hmm. one of which is the just the, the evolutionary move itself. Just this. Yeah. Yeah procreate urge as Whitman would say right. so yeah. so what's Beautiful. your sort of sticky uh, uh, hang up with that or what 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 part of that is or how or how would you maybe define it further well a lot of times we explore cosmocentric experiences but we're actually in fourth person perspective so for example what we do then is we actually zoom out from a global perspective and we zoom out even further into outer space and we kind of view it from a, like from a cosmic place. And that's a type of cosmocentric experience yeah. too. Yeah. But it still contains the constructs of earth, human, yeah. culture. Right. right? Yeah. I, I might say that that's a cosmocentric in the exteriors. Yeah. And there's this cosmocentric in the interiors where you're just feeling the winds of karma and history and, you know, that sort of thing. But those are even constructs. Yeah, I guess so, huh? (laughs) Yeah. So we can get cosmic. That's what I'm saying. We can get cosmic centered orientations at fourth person perspective, but it's not the same as cosmocentric at fifth person perspective. All right, cool. Because because you're free of the constructs and you're seeing it from from that perspective. So. Right. Well, I think we're, I think we're over my pay grade at this point. <laughs> but keep going, Kim. I mean, I know you you and Terry and others have mapped this out. Uh, you know, and I and the maps get a little more tenuous as we go because right. there's fewer people. Yeah. Uh, but you've done real research here, and and what do you what are you seeing about what is you know, well, Terry's on the end of the research. I'm on the end of experiential and working with people that are moving through these developmental levels and working with myself as I move through these developmental levels. So I want to back off from, from the, from it is research and it has got great statistics behind it, by the way. But um, I, I'm going to leave that part for Terry to talk about because she knows the nuances of the statistics and I don't want to get some of those wrong. And by the way, I have a episode where I'm interviewing Terry O'Fallon as well. Oh, that's great. So I'll, I'll link to it. I'm forgetting the name of it, but I'll link to it. Okay, super. So that'll, that'll give you the actual research. I'm, of course, I hear it all the time, but I don't have it as well as Terry has it. So Fair enough. But still, can you give us just, you know, an, an impression of what happens after this 5.0, 5.5 thing. Yeah. So or any, 5. More that, any more that you got to say about the 5.0 and 5.5 too. Yeah, because I mean, we haven't gone into the shadow of 5.5 yet. Well, there, oh, for God's sakes. Well, let's do it. <laughs> so 5.5 is an upshift of the 3.5. This is your orange achiever oriented person, right? And what do we you know? We see similar issues at 5.5. We see people striving single-minded striving they want their projects they want their 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 unique take on their models they uh they don't want anybody else to mess with them they uh they see the world in in hierarchy in nested hierarchy so you might see the world like nested dolls for example and you see worlds within worlds within worlds within worlds and that's a it's a beautiful thing it's just that you think that every time you enter a new world you've entered a new developmental level 
And so this is where you can start putting yourself up at extremely high levels fairly rapidly because once you start understanding how to, how to expand from one world to another world, into a larger world, into a larger world, you can get really good at that process and just keep going. And it feels the same way like you're moving to a new developmental level. But you're actually what? Climbing the corporate ladder of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sort of uh, resonate with that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, so, um, so what happens is, notice the shift between 3.5 and 4.0, because this is a similar shift between uh, 5.5 and 6.0. And the shift is, I'm climbing the corporate ladder, but all of a sudden, I'm not paying attention to everybody else's thoughts, feelings, emotions. I'm not paying attention to the internal thoughts, feelings, and emotions, right? And now we have to start bringing all of them in. Well, a similar thing happens. We start seeing, instead of seeing the world as nested uh, Russian dolls, we start seeing it as vast networks of consciousness. And so we start seeing the neural network of consciousness itself, vastly externally in the cosmos and in, inside our own minds. And, and that's a whole different world of that's the next developmental level not just i can enter a new bigger nested doll right but to actually see the neural network occurring mm -hmm. yeah. in consciousness wow and in, and in the universe you know, wow. externally and internally it's a beautiful place wow so i uh i i could get to some degree this idea that Okay, I got my project, I've got my calling, I've got my voice, and I want to That's do right. it just my way. It's what I'm doing here. That's right, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, but I do find that to be kind of, um, there's something about it that's still too solid, or there's something about it that, that is unsatisfying. And so mm. the, the, the next thing would be to open up to this bigger neural network of, Describe it again, Kim. Yeah. Neural network of consciousness, just the way the neural network of consciousness occurs internally and externally. Actually, internal and external really are falling away. We can have internal and external fall away in a meditative state much earlier, but this is in a, in a very vast way. And, <clears throat> and you're uh, observing, feeling, experiencing, and your new I is the neural network of consciousness. It's not just a new larger perspective, a new larger nested doll. It's got mm -hmm. the complexity, you know, think about systems dynamics at 4.5, early 4. and late 4.0. You start seeing this complex adaptive neural network of consciousness systems. And this, this collective has got nothing to do with human collectives, by the way. Now with this to do be... with, well, go on. I can include it. Of course, includes human systems and, and consciousness, but it's much more vast than that. Right. Yeah. Now, with this, so as I, as, as I might in some future life move into this stage, <laughs> yeah. I need to have my own voice and my own thing and just my way, what, relaxes or it, mm -hmm. I, I drop that or mm -hmm. I trust mm -hmm. this bigger system or mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Something like yeah. that, right? That's 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 similar to what happens. So for example, one of the mystical things that can happen from the 4.5 to the 5.0 shift, if you think of it in terms of let's take a Christian tradition, for example, uh, there is no God, then I have the power gods, you know, not necessarily Christian, any in just about any religion actually. There are no gods, and I have the power gods, and then I conform to the power gods I, because they're the ones that have power it's not like they're supposed to help me i'm supposed to help them right and then at third person perspective what happens we start feeling god come into ourselves you know and at 4.0 that deepens in a very beautiful way and the 5.0 my consciousness actually goes up into the divine it goes the other way so now my consciousness is in the divine. The divine isn't in me. I mean, it's both ways, but it's, it's, it goes up into the divine, okay? And so then if you go up into the divine on a mystical level, and then you move into 5.5 where you start seeing all the nested dolls and all the different universes and things like that, then at 6.0, you start realizing, remember where I said you have to see 
at 4.0, you want to sit at the round table and view it from every ego state's perspective. That's what happens at 6.0. You start seeing consciousness from every other perspective of consciousness. And as you get good at that, you start seeing it simultaneously from all the different points of consciousness. Wow. That's and pretty that, cool. Yeah. And, and that's, <laughs> you're talking about that being up at 6.0. Which... Yeah. And that's why I teach 4.0 this way. Because I learned that you've got to be able to do that to be healthy at 6.0. So what you need to do at 4.0 is to start training that right and now. Remind me what it is that you do at 4.0? 4.0, remember, you sit at the round table, but right. it's not just dominant ego that right. you have to okay. see the whole round table from. You have to do it from each ego state. Got How it. does each ego state view the round table? Okay, so the ratcheting up to 6.0, you're doing the same thing with consciousness itself consciousness itself and different points of consciousness right and so this is uh transpersonal this becomes oh this is beyond transpersonal okay yeah well it is transpersonal i shouldn't say beyond transpersonal but transpersonal is considered 5.5 okay and And that's where we identify transpersonal is when we begin to identify with something beyond my jeffness Actually, even at 5.0, we start doing that. But at right. 5.5, that's when we really get into it's it. Yes. stable with that. All right, <clears throat> cool. Yeah. And then, so then moving into 6.0, I see that you call it universal. Yeah. And then 6.5 is illuminated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this, this is basically, you know, the, these high spiritual states that I read about occasionally. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and well, I, I don't want to use the term spiritual. We call them developmental stages yeah, right, right? On, right on as you should and of course you can get states when you don't have the stage but these are yeah. developmental stages that people often call spiritual yes. yeah well and that that actually gets to another interesting thing about integral theory is that uh states become stages as we say mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so w- we can have states of this unit of consciousness yeah. and sometimes we do just right out of the blue you know, we're walking right. on a path that all of a sudden the right. world is stage lit, you know. Right. And, yeah. and and it's not about us that we're, you know, it's a whole thing. And But that's temporary, that those things come yeah. and go. And yeah. when you get to these this universal and illuminated stage, it's wow. kind of like that stably, mm-hmm. apparently. Mm-hmm. So they say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. more cool. stable <laughs> yeah, yeah there you go. got it yeah it's, i mean you can walk you know, around in it pretty regularly but of course shadow pulls you out historical yeah. shadow pulls you out right so so we have a shadow up there too oh please of course so, because what happens is any shadow that hasn't been resolved at 4.0 and 4.5 it'll it'll haunt you until you deal with it right right so you might have dealt with enough shadow to get there but i mean you're dealing with much more refined things all the time as you move up. So if, if you come back to like 4.5, for example, remember where I say you just start getting that quiet mind? I want you to imagine that, remember a time when you were in a room and somebody turned all the lights out and it was really dark and you couldn't see anything? But then after, and you could wave your hand in front of your face and you couldn't see it. But then after a few minutes, you could start seeing your hand, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what happens when we get to quiet mind is in the emptiness, in the quietness, what happens is substance comes out of that. Uh, out, of the, out of that, we start seeing more refined things that we couldn't hear before, more, more refined things that we couldn't see before, more refined things we couldn't feel before because the theater of life was too dramatic, right? Mm-hmm. And once the theater of life falls away, you are so quiet and so calm that at first it just feels like a, a absolute emptiness in a way. And then you start seeing and feeling these more refined experiences. And that's what leads you to move on up. But uh, as a result of feeling and seeing more refined experiences, we might get more refined, smaller, refined shadow that we didn't hear and see before. Mm-hmm. So we need to keep up with with mm-hmm. that work, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's true all the way up in a way is that we mm-hmm. we just get a more refined look. That's right. At, at uh, yeah. you know, I, I have a Buddhist background, so I think of it as my karma, you know, just yeah, this 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 stream of 
cause and effect that goes, God starts, God knows when. Uh, That's right. <laughs> but, and, and I always love the Buddhist teaching that karma is unfathomable. So we don't mm-hmm. have to sort it out and tease it apart. Mm-hmm. But we get ever deeper insight into it. And, yeah. and, and we let it burn, you know, when we drop our attachments to it and, right. and, and we move into bigger, more liberated space. Uh-huh. And this seems pretty liberated once we get up here into the 6.0, 6.5, very, very. but not fully. Yeah. Yeah. It just, and again, it depends upon how fully we resolve our shadow as we go, yeah. you know, it's more and more liberating all the time. So then, so then we get into <laughs> tier four <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's unified. That's unified. Yeah. And that's where it's just like, I don't know what. <laughs> and I don't know either. I, I think I'm starting to get states there. Maybe I don't know, uh, but I, I'm not an authority on it. All right. So well, I'm actually, not- <laughs> even if you think you, Kim Barta, think that you might be getting states there, what's the quality of it? I mean, we, we won't hold you to it, but how do you know? Again, it's another strange simplicity on the other side of complexity. So you got all these neural networks, right? What happens is there's there's a falling away of all that into another deeper level of of simplicity, but I don't have enough to really talk about it yet. Yeah. I well, just you know, notice that it's co- very different from what I've been doing. Right. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, you know, the Buddhists talk about the higher stages as being a cessation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe it's something like that. Mm-hmm. Just things stop being. It, yeah. It's a, it's uh, definitely, uh, yeah, I, I don't have language well for it yet, yeah. so I don't feel like I can serve anybody yeah. to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And that's where well, we all have to be honest with ourselves, where we're at, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's fascinating to conjecture uh, mm-hmm. of what uh, is yeah. next and yeah. coming and, yeah. to, uh, you know, evaluate where we are and look at other people. And, you know, this is all good fun in a way, mm-hmm. but it's also fruitful work. If people want to find out more about stages and, you know, the various stuff that you do, where would they go? And just give us a little bit of an overview of what they'll find there. Okay, yeah. So you can go to stagesinternational.com. You'll get a free PDF on um, an overview of the stages model, how functional and useful it is. I love it because you can see the reciprocating patterns. Remember when I talked about learning 4.0? really good. It's going to help you when you get to 6.0. If you try and skip over 4.0, you're going to have a tough time of it at 6.0. You're going to have to go all the way back to 4.0 and work out so you can actually get in there. Right. It's a very elegant system. And the PDF is beautiful. Every developmental level. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. So you get that PDF, you'll see our courses. We have other writings that you can uh, look at. Um, And uh, we have uh, all these courses. We just are completing a shadow into soul course right now. We uh, are actually starting to train people now to do um, stages using the stages model as a coaching or therapeutic tool. It's a very powerful tool. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, we, uh, we have workshops all around the world now. Um, well, not all around the world, obviously, but in various places around the world. Plus and online. Plus online, all kinds yeah. of workshops online. So you can yeah. just kind of peruse those and see if any of those strike your fancy. and. Um, Cool. And your new book is, again? Shadow Patterns. Shadow Patterns. And Mm -hmm. I assume it's a good bit of what we talked about. It's a good bit of what we just talked about. That's right. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to that, Kim, because I I could use another run at this. I mean, I I, I learned a lot, but I know there's, you know, more to be gained on, uh, you know. Yep. Yep. There's another dip. So, That's right. <laughs> good, good. Well, I'd love to have you there and uh, love to share my book with you. Cool. And uh, again, uh, stagesinternational.com. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, yeah, so thank you so much, Kim. It's really been fun to get your wow. transmission and I, I receive it as such. And I think, oh, my, good. My oh it's great too. being here with you too, Jeff. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much. All right. Best regards to Terry and stay in touch. See you next time. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Bye -bye. Bye Bye-bye.